Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to be talking about how to put a laser on the RFB. This weapon has really been one of the standout performers in 12.12 so far, not in terms of being a meta weapon, but with early access at Skier 2 for 55,000 rubles and M80 rounds from Peacekeeper 2 at $2 each, it's still hitting really hard up into the mid-wipe. However, one of the main downsides to the RFB is its lack of modability. This secures its position as a value weapon, as we can only dream of getting anywhere close to the good 308 weapons in terms of recoil, such as the SR25 and the M1A. One unfortunate aspect to this is the difficulty in attaching lasers onto the RFB, as in Tarkov it has no rails innately that give it compatibility with tactical devices. It's widely thought that it's downright impossible to use a laser for this gun at all, but this is in fact not the case. The first way, which has been around for a while, is using the Holosun HS401 G5 Reflex Sight. This optic is sold at Skier 2 for 17,000 rubles, but is commonly found cheaper on the flea market down at even around 10k at times, and this comes with a green laser inbuilt into the system. You have to use the hotkey for change scope magnification, i.e. the button that changes between 1x and 6x on a Voodoo for example. So whatever you might have bound for this key, you have to press this, which is a little strange, but it activates the laser on the Holosun. Although the green laser here gives us the ability to see where our shots are landing, this doesn't actually improve our point shooting accuracy like you would expect from other tactical devices, which is half of the reason why people use them in the first place. Not only that, you're then stuck with just a short ranged optic too, which isn't really the RFB's forte given its relatively high recoil. I'll just show you a quick test that I did where we can see the point fire performance without any scopes at all, and it's very similar to that using the Holosun laser. Not entirely scientific, but I'm sure you'll get the point. But with the new additions in 12.12, there is a new way to do this properly. Yes, we can have a long range scope, a red dot, and a laser all at the same time. And before you ask, yep, this build is a little bit meme -y. I'm trying not to make too much of a habit of this, but I just can't seem to help it at the moment. All right, so what we're gonna be using to get this done is the new Wilcox Raptor ES Tactical Rangefinder, which is sold by Jaeger 3 for 23,000 rubles and about double that on the flea. As well as being a rangefinder, the Raptor comes with a regular assortment of lasers and given that it's a tactical device, this means that the point fire spread bonus also comes along with it. You can see from the clip in the next test the dramatic improvement in performance of the overall spread when using it with the laser activated. If we do a linked search on this item, we can see that there is a handful of weapons and attachments that are compatible with this device, but most of these are not useful for the RFB except for two, the Recknagel Air Attack Ring Mounts and either 30mm or 34mm, which are purchasable at Jaeger 3 for approximately 8,000 rubles each. What makes these different to the other mounts that fit on top of the RFB rail is that the Picatinnies that come with it are long enough to fit the rangefinder on top, meaning that we can get the point fire bonus onto this weapon for the first time in Tarkov's history. Not only that, but because inherently it's attached to a ring mount, we can put something like the TAC-30 into it and have a long range optic as well as a 1x mode too, giving us way more flexibility than ever before with this combination of parts, not to mention the rangefinder itself. Next, I want to point out one of the best features of the rangefinder, which is that it doesn't only come with a visible red laser, but you also get an infrared laser mode too, which is often used by the top Tarkov players. This is because as good as the laser is for seeing where you'll be shooting when you're not an expert with point fire, and for the record, that includes me as well, the fact that both you and your opponent can see it is a double-edged sword and can lose you the element of surprise in certain situations. If your point fire skills are up to scratch though, IR mode gives the point fire shooting spread bonus without showing any visible signs of where you're looking. As I said, the rangefinder comes with both, so you can decide for yourself which one will work best for you and your playstyle. If you're playing around with the IR light for the first time, the best way to check if it's on is to stand really close to a wall or look at the floor, as a small cone of red light is just visible at super close ranges when it's active. 
But I hear you not asking, what if we were to add a red dot to this build as well, rather than relying on the one times in the big scopes? Well, you may have noticed that we have a spare rail here, and you can probably guess as to what's coming next. We can indeed put a reflex sight onto this other rail, but unfortunately because the rangefinder is so large, most of the compatible sights here can't actually be seen through because the rangefinder is in the way. But fear not, there is a way, through the use of the high mounts for the small optics. We have four choices of reflex sight, the aim point acro, the aim point T1, the aim point H2, and the Sig Sauer Romeo 4. Of these, the Acro has its special mount from Peacekeeper 2, which is the BNT QD NAR mount, and all the other three fit to the Aimpoint Micro Spacer High from Peacekeeper 1, which goes on to either of the Aimpoint Micro Standard mounts, which are also from Peacekeeper 1. One thing I did not realise is that you can't add or remove from these mounts in RAID, strangely, but maybe you need a screwdriver or something IRL, who knows. But either way, we can add these sights and mounts to the top, onto the other side of the scope, which allows the optics to clear the top of the rangefinder and actually be usable. Of these, I would say that the T1 is probably my favourite. It has the cleanest dot in my opinion, and it doesn't have as chunky a surround like the Acro does, but as usual, it's down to personal choice on which one you prefer. Also, bear in mind that you can have these swapped the other way around as well, so again, whether you prefer to have the scope closer to your face with a bigger dot, or further away with a smaller dot and less vision inside the actual sight itself is really up to you. So there you have it, an RFB with a rangefinder, a high powered optic, a reflex sight and a tactical device that reduces point fire spread in either visible or IR laser modes. Whoever said you can't have it all eh? So as usual if you learned something please consider dropping a like and a comment, to see when I'm streaming you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Check out our Scav Talk podcast in the links below and with all that said I'll see you next time and as always have fun in your raids.